Now I'm going to introduce Professor Alexander Kunich, who will introduce our opening keynote address. Thank you, Jamila. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander Kunish. I'm a professor here uh, in the marketing department at Rutgers Business School. And I've been working with my esteemed colleagues for the last six months to bring this event to life. Um, it's significant for brands, marketers, and consumers, and I assure you there are valuable lessons for all of us today. As we kick off our panelists and keynotes, we're joined by Charlene Polite Corley, Vice President for Diverse Insights and Partnerships at Nielsen. Nielsen, as we know, is a global leader in audience insights, data, and analytics, measuring behavior across all channels and platforms to learn more about consumers, empowering marketers and brands with trusted intelligence that helps to fuel action. I know during my conversations with Charlene as we prepared for this event, her passion about consumer representation in the media is evident. As part of the diversity, equity, and inclusion team, at Nielsen, Charlene is responsible for thought leadership and research development, leveraging Nielsen data that enables the perspective, needs, and values of historically excluded groups to be more fully understood. In her current role, Charlene also collaborates with media industry and advocacy organizations to drive equity and awareness for diverse communities. She joined Nielsen in 2009 as a member of the Emerging Leaders Program and continued to grow her career through various roles in local and national TV, supporting clients like PBS, the Sesame Workshop, Discovery, and TV One. Charlene's a Florida native and a proud graduate of Florida A&M University. And after living in five states, she now is called Maryland home. Outside of Nielsen, Charlene is very active. She's a founding member of the Washington DC chapter of Chief, the private network for women leaders. She's an event speaker. We're honored to have her join us today a career mentor, adjunct professor, wife, and mom. Charlene, I'll ask that you turn on your microphone and camera. I see your camera is on, so we're ready to go, and I'm thrilled to turn the program over to you. Please, everyone, join me in giving a warm RBS welcome to Charlene Polite Corley. So hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, as stated, I'm Charlene Polite Corley. I'm joining you today from Piscataway Lands here in Maryland, and let's jump right into it. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about uh, how diversity is core to the work we do here at Nielsen um, and essential to the future of the media industry uh, that we serve and to each of the brands that you'll be working to represent as future leaders. Uh, populations are changing, media behaviors are changing, and what people expect from content and brands is changing. Uh, so understanding the power of inclusion among these changes is essential to your success in today's complex landscape that you heard the theme talk about. Uh, the last year and a half in particular has only added to that complexity, so between the pandemic and the racial reckoning. But what does that mean when it comes to creating content and advertising that will break through in today's um, simultaneously crowded and siloed media landscape? That's where Nielsen comes in. We're on a mission to create a better media future for all. And that means using our expertise as the standard for the uh, media industry, but also as a key input to um, undoing the uh, the historic and uh, wrongs, but also measuring our progress toward removing systemic barriers from the media ecosystem. How do marketers learn from diversity, equity, and inclusion trends? Step one is embrace that DEI is not a trend. It's an essential lens for your future success as a brand builder and strategic leader. Our research at Nielsen shows that demand for representation in both content and advertising is growing right alongside the diverse populations in our country. Sorry guys, I'm having of course some, some virtual issues. <laughs> Um, but right alongside the diverse populations in our country, which means that the consumers that you'll be reaching out to, um, will you'll need to know about, you'll need to know how to interact with them. And in fact, 41% of the viewers in our attitudes on representation on TV study responded that they were more likely to buy from brands that advertise in content that represents them. 
As brands and businesses of all sizes chart their paths forward, your cultural competency as a leader is one of your most valuable assets to help you acknowledge and repair blind spots, especially when it comes to your brand messaging and promotions to diverse audiences. What does that mean? A perfect example is a Nielsen study we did from earlier in the year where we were able to identify over 1200 sites and over $153 million in digital advertising spend on websites that published anti-Asian hate speech. This is a huge risk to the brands that show up next to harmful, hateful content and a and underscoring the importance of why you've got to be looking across DEI principles as a key part of how you lead your strategic brand. Diversity has many dimensions though. So navigating the demand for nuanced representation and content and advertising is essential to your reputation and to your growth. Let's talk about why. For the identity groups that have been historically excluded from media, representation really matters. These are also the groups controlling growing levels of audience and buying power, but let's highlight three trends that we are constantly thinking about here at Nielsen. What does the latest census data mean for you? Urgency and complexity in getting representation right. By 2044, it's projected that the groups we refer to as minorities today will actually make up the majority of our population here in the U.S. Many brands are still in the infancy of understanding and engaging these diverse identity groups as potential customers. And in many cases, we're the future of their business growth. A key example of that complexity, about one in 10 Americans now identify as being multicultural. So for example, there's 3.8 million Afro-Latinos in the country, and there's been a 28% increase in Asian Latinos since 2010. As a whole, multicultural Americans are now the fastest growing demographic in the country. So your brand will have to navigate how to capture this complexity within populations without the erasure of others. Video content is a huge part of how we spend our day. That's point number two. How and where your marketing efforts show up on screen will continue to be critical. Over half of our average media time is spent with video across TV sets, uh, apps and online usage with computers, tablets, and smartphones. And these numbers get even higher when we start to look at diverse audiences. And number three, uh, speaking of diverse audiences, uh, they're driving demand for representation like never before and actively seeking inclusive content by migrating to new platforms that break the stereotypical mold for their identity group. The overwhelming majority of Black, Indigenous, people of color in our research responded that they're more likely to watch content where their identity group is represented. And technology is taking these viewers to more of this content. For example, our data in Dallas, Texas, um, one of the fastest growing markets for Asian Americans, um, shows that there's been a 45% increase in the adoption of streaming devices among the AAPI community in that market. And it's almost double the growth rate for those devices for the market overall. These trends underline the importance of video content. How we connect with diverse audiences on these platforms is critical to how <clears throat> your customers will receive your brand's commitment to DEI and to them. So when we think about ad supported content that gets funded by marketing dollars, there's really no bigger opportunity today than in television. But keep in mind the omnipresence of social media across age groups and in diverse, across diverse communities, along with the impact, impact of influencers in the creator economy today. This means that television content and advertising is just one, albeit very large, part of how your marketing efforts will come across to customers. You may not always be in control of the message um, or the comment section, but that engagement is part of how your consumers will get to know your brand. It's easy to see why half of marketers in our annual marketing report said they are keeping their TV budgets the same, but 70% plan to increase their social media spend in the next year. Bottom line, Making DEI a key part of who you are as a marketer is good business. Bonus, it's also the right thing to do. If we look at buying power of diverse communities, we're also talking trillions of dollars and about a quarter of our country's uh, GDP today. The Asian American community's buying power has grown over 111% in the last decade, and they're 20 more, 28% more likely to buy from brands that advertise and content that represents them. 
look no further than the current number one movie in the box office this year. Uh, Hispanic and Latina consumers are 1.95 trillion dollars in buying power and 58% more likely to spend with brands that advertise and programming that represents them. The same for Black audiences, who are twice as likely to spend their $1.6 trillion in buying power with brands that advertise and content where they can feel seen. Think about this from different angles, too. So last year, women over 50 outspent their younger counterparts across 25 key categories, dropping nearly $800 million in 2020. Uh, our Nielsen research also shows uh, that globally, LGBTQ consumers uh, buying power is an estimated $3.7 trillion, but our recent study showed that for many brands, the only time they're reaching out to this consumer base with TV ads is during Pride Month, and once a year isn't going to cut it. Uh, similarly, our research found among um, people living with a disability, uh, their estimated um, uh, spending power among working age people with disabilities is about $21 billion. And we found that uh, they're only represented or featured in primetime advertising just 1% of the time. A lot of money left on the table. We know getting representation right is complex. So Nielsen is now measuring representation in television programming. Through our new data set, Inclusion Analytics, where we combine what we know about who's in the audience through our TV ratings, who is cast in leading roles in shows and themes featured in um, a program uh, based on our decades of content metadata. But we can combine all of that to capture and actually produce metrics on the percent of time or the share of cast that diverse identity groups appear on screen. And with this information, advertisers are empowered to find not just the most watched program, but the program bringing nuanced representation to life on screen. These numbers are important for us to establish a baseline for how and where different identity groups appear on screen. But representation isn't just a numbers game. Tokens and stereotypes are being rejected by the audiences they seek to represent, and this outdated content poses a risk for the brands that support it as well. When present on screen, racially and ethnically diverse audiences are looking for authentic representation in storylines that goes beyond tropes. More than 40% of both Hispanic and Asian viewers felt portrayal of their communities was mostly inaccurate. Black audiences were three times as likely than white viewers to say their portrayal of their identity group on TV was completely inaccurate. Even though this slide shows us that Black women um, are represent, represented on screen uh, in television programming at population parity. Black audiences don't always feel like content accurately represents them. And in fact, Nielsen's data further supports this notion with our content metadata revealing the most prominent descriptors for programming featuring Black talent includes investigations, pursuits, and streets as themes. So although Black people are present in the story, how often do we get to see a complex, intersectional, or nuanced character outside of an urban setting? Let's look at some more uh, examples. It's about quantity and quality when it comes to DEI initiatives that connect. The context of representation on screen is just as important as increasing visibility for historically excluded communities. Let's take a look at <clears throat> the extremely diverse Native American population, um, combining a so a hundreds of sovereign nations and thousands of years of history. Uh, people who identify as Native American actually grew 87% in the last decade to 9.7 million in the latest census. Brands like Nike and Sephora are tapping into the need for representation in their messaging and product lines that elevate indigenous people and cultures. But in content, representation of Native Americans significantly lags their presence in the population, unless we're talking about mascots and sports. Nielsen research shows that 56% of male sports fans noted that when they see Native Americans used as mascots, it's usually the only time they see Native Americans represented on TV. Their experience isn't far off in our inclusion analytics data set measures representation on screen for indigenous peoples in leading roles at just one seventh their presence in the population. The interest and demand for native led contemporary stories about their communities and experiences is there. 
Native Americans are twice as likely to be drawn to content representative of their uh, identity group. And the new program Reservation Dogs is a great example of this. When the show premiered in, on Hulu in um, August, Native American access to the streaming platform jumped 6% compared to the month prior. And our data also showed that although this community is about 1.4% of our TV population, they were 8% of the premier uh, week average audience. One other example, uh, television content isn't just a key platform you'll use for your advertising campaigns. It's also a tool that helps audiences inform their ideologies about their own identity and the identities of other people. Our research shows that 87% of viewers were interested in seeing more content featuring people from outside their identity group. And 35% of viewers felt portrayal of people outside their own identity group was accurate. So it matters how diverse talent shows up on screen a great example of moving beyond the normal genres and themes where period programs like Bridgerton or The Spanish Princess, featuring a racially diverse cast in a fresh new way, Bridgerton in particular um, was able to uh, garner a historically large audience uh, made up of very diverse viewers and really broke the mold for representation and period content. So Nielsen took a look at the genre as a whole and um, looking at uh, 23 different programs set at least 100 years in the past and found that four of the top five programs based on our viewing ratings also had strong representation of uh, lead black talent in their cast. So not only were these the most popular programs among the genre, they were the only period programs in the data set with lead black talent at or above parity with population. Ratings for these top programs significantly outperformed the other programs on the list by a factor of two to sometimes even 10 times higher. How your brand connects with the diverse consumers is changing given the explosion of content choices and devices. To find this fresh take on representation, audiences are on the move. Where are they headed? Um, and how do they discover brands if not in TV advertising? Destination number one, social media. The images highlight a few key brands that have disrupted beauty and skincare like um, Minted and Black Girl Scum Sunscreen by solving needs within diverse communities, like the need for a sunblock that doesn't cast a white ashy residue on rich skin tones. The social media comment section acts as a instant product review in real time, aiding discovery and leading to constantly sold out products in Ulta. As connectivity and digital interactions increase, marketers place emphasis on the end of a customer journey, like an actual purchase or credit card charge. Um, but we're encouraging our clients to focus on the entire consumer journey rather than just an endpoint. Brand awareness, customer acquisition are critical and playing out constantly on social media. This is especially important for diverse audiences that find and engage trusted communities on these platforms. Our data shows the reach of racially and ethnically diverse audiences is significantly higher than the general population across multiple platforms. Um, on TikTok, for example, Hispanic audiences in particular spend 21% more time per day. On Instagram, black, uh, black users of the app outpace total population for time spent by 45%. Destination number two, streaming. Nielsen research shows that 55% of Latino, viewing, Latino viewers felt that streaming platforms had content more relevant to their identity group. And it's showing up in our ratings data. 34% of Latino viewing minutes were spent streaming content compared to 25% for non-Hispanic white audiences. Keep in mind that streaming today is a mix of subscription-based and ad-supported content. On the ad-supported side, the connected TV landscape empowers brands to get personal and tailor the ads audiences see on their smart TV apps like Roku or Canela. Connected TV budgets are estimated to increase by another 20%, allowing a more tailored TV ad experience when brands get it right. But that means understanding the diverse audiences who are tuning in. For streaming content that is not ad supported, branded content integration is a huge opportunity. And when done right, our data shows that this approach can really uh, cause significant lift across key brand metrics. Here's an example. Over 70 million viewers were exposed to a beverage ad um, and the linear TV campaign uh, showed on the left delivered 73% of the campaign's viewers. 
but the brand integration with one of the most watched programs on Netflix, Cobra Kai, delivered 19% of exposures that the brand otherwise would not have received. Only 8% of the audience saw the ad in both places, understand, underscoring this pretty efficient marketing strategy. Hispanic and Latino cast members make up 10% of the leading talent for Cobra Kai, but this population makes up over 19% of the program's audience. And who's the right messenger these days with all of these changes? Brands and businesses should understand that intersectional diversity is our new normal. It isn't just a part of our corporate social responsibility strategy, it's a part of our growth strategy. Half of 18 to 24 year olds in our study um, expect the media brands they engage with to embrace a standard of representation and inclusion true to their diverse lived experience. And that will require new messengers and forums to build your brand. Some of you, especially any gamers in the audience, may recognize Chris Lamberson here on the screen, better known as Swag to millions of YouTube and Twitch subscribers. He's had at least four major brand collaborations announced this month um, alone and with endorsements and brand partnerships for the new 007 movie, McDonald's, Arizona Cardinals, and his gaming crew, The Phase Clan, even landed the cover of Sports Illustrated over the summer. Our data shows his Instagram following has increased 40% in the last six months, with nearly half of his reach made up of men 18 to 24 years old. With the unique quality and reach of Swag's followers, what would it cost a brand to reach a similar audience? Our Nielsen Influence Scope analysis put Swag's average media value at over $49,000 per post, and that's on his smallest platform. In an era that upended the status quo, Brands have been required to take a hard look at the strategies they've historically used to reach or exclude potential customers and adapt like never before. Your work as a marketing leader and the content and medium platforms you'll use to build your brands are all closely tied. How our increasingly diverse population is engaging with all three continues to evolve, but one thing is clear. The expectation of brands and content creators is to deliver representation that really connects. That's hard to do without the right expertise in the room and a commitment to cultural competency driven by diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I hope that this has given you a lot to think about. Be sure to visit nielsen.com where you can find all of these resources and um, insights um, on our uh, insights page. And on Monday, you'll be able to download our latest report, which will dive into the uh, uh, Black audience trends in more depth. Enjoy the rest of your conference and thanks for the opportunity.